the one third kuchin. The people of the lakes. We work together. We hunt together. We play together. And we pray together. The land is our home. Here in the northern Yukon. Caribou is there. Now I'm happy. I'm gonna eat good. The land has kept us for thousands of years. But something is happening to our home. My name is Yudi Mercury. I am Vantak Wachin from Old Crow. I want to share with you what is happening to our homeland here in the Yukon's Arctic. Every year, my family goes north to Old Crow Flats to hunt, fish, and gather traditional foods from the land. We have been coming here for generations. It is the second largest wetland in North America from before the pyramids were built. From the time that mammoths and giant beavers still roam the land. This is our bank, our grocery store, our playground, our church. We have passed on the ways of surviving in this land from generation to generation. I remember when I was a child, my mom would take me everywhere with her. I was always on her back. She was carrying me with a baby strap and a blanket. And there are some times that I remember where she plopped me on the ground and leave me there for a long time while just picking berries. And I would listen, I'd stare up at the sky and look at the trees around me and the plants. And I could hear everything. I could hear their voices, the mothers talking um, in our language and I could hear the birds singing, and I, I could see everything. I found that that's really important to teach my child, too. Ever since he was little, I took him out to the land, and I put him down on the ground so that he can be quiet, and he can feel, and he can become connected to the land. I found that really, really helped him a lot to be able to um, open him up to listen and to hear what's, what's going on around him. The silence of nature or the animals that are around, it's so important to listen to those things and um, I think that's very, very important to teach. My grandmother used to talk to the ravens and talk and read the land and the water. Early in the morning before we'd get up, she'd step out of the tent in May and she'd stand there and wait for the ravens to come by. And then she'd lift her hands up and talk to them in the gym. And she'd ask them, where are the caribou? When are they coming? If you let me know, I'll give you the caribou eye. And I'd always know when she'd come back with a sad look on her face, what the ravens had said. But there was always that one time, that one time when she'd come in and she'd say, get ready, because the caribou were coming. There's a lot to learn at camp. We are taught from a very young age how to skin animals, how to prepare drying racks, how to dry meat and to honor our ancestors. We know by caring for the land and remembering the past that the land will care for us.
in the Guchin culture, we give thanks to the caribou that come our way and then gave us their lives for us to eat and have meat and stuff. And that's what I'm here to do right now. And uh, to say thanks to all the animals that came our way and to let us stay on, the, on their land and stuff. So, Masicho Vitsai. The land has provided us for thousands of years. But it's not always certain what it will bring or when. Well, it's May 21st and it's been four days since we've seen caribou. And we have no meat in camp and it's kind of weird that we, have, we haven't seen caribou for the last couple days because they should be coming pretty soon. So I'm just getting ready here on this pole to make a meat, meat rack for uh, my mom. And uh, so my, we saw nine caribou about 15 kilometers away at my uncle's cabin there. And my, one of the guys went and checked it out with her cousin Kibby, and uh, they're going, they're going. He might go camp there at their camp for a bit. So we'll see what happens. They're gonna be gone, and he'll shoot at the creek over here if they get any caribou, and then we'll go over there and harvest it up and bring it back here and cook some fry meat. I think the caribou season has started. The first herd just came in and uh, my brother and his friend just went out there to go check it out. They're going to hunt and see if they can get a couple. So uh, we're just gonna wait and see what happens. Cause right now there's a lot of them. Let's see. I heard one gunshot, so it was sounded like he hit it. Our people are very closely connected to the land. Our life and culture are based on the porcupine caribou herd. It is the source of our food, our teaching, our traditional tools, and clothing. We know when it is healthy, and we know when it is not. And lately, our elders, our hunters, have seen disturbing changes. Caribou, they start coming through here mid-May, middle of May. They uh, migrate north. And, uh, usually it lasts for about three weeks. Migration through crow flats, but last lately, the last few years, it's been getting short, and uh, caribou are all mixed up now. It's you see them all mixed up, bull and cows traveling. Usually, the cows they travel first on their migration north, but now, uh, last few years, I've been noticing that bulls are coming first and. Uh, it's uh, changing quite a bit. Sometimes, uh, like last year, there was no caribou at all. Just a few cross crow flats. The rest stayed high on the mountains. And, and uh, the short was run. The, the run migration was short. Well, the caribou is declining now. It'll never recover, you know. I know that. Because I stay about a mile above Old Crow, just a mile from Old Crow. 
last two years I see caribou crossing in the spring. There's, there's about 300 caribou crossing that river in one bunch. And I, there was only four cows in the front. The rest is all yearlings. Scientists say climate change is happening around the world. In the northern Yukon, temperatures are expected to rise faster and higher than anywhere else in western North America. And we've already seen the signs. The permafrost is melting. Water systems are very low in some cases completely dry. Hunters like Georgie Moses are already struggling with the collapse of fish stocks, a basic staple of ours. Salmon are declining very fast. He says it makes it hard for him to feed his dogs and sustain his way of life. Now we're having a hard time with getting fish and um, like the fisheries department, they shut us down from fishing, so I have no choice but to, to dig into my freezer again, like and bring extra food. I can't depend on my net anymore. I only got two fish. A couple of days ago, I had five, which was really good. Today, I only got two, so it's getting lesser and lesser and. I don't know what we're going to do and if they really stop us from fishing and and I have to beat the people too, you know, I, I was grew up, brought up like that from my grandfather so I have to share my food too, and looks like I can't share anything today. And three years ago, on June 7, 2007, our spring home for centuries Zelma Lake disappeared in just one day. The 20 kilometer square lake simply vanished when the banks around it melted away. It left nothing behind but cracked mud. Everything, the fish, the beavers, the muskrats are all gone now. This is, this is going to change the entire ecosystems here. Um, Usually this is where we get caribou. Caribou usually come here. We don't even, we never even saw one set of tracks on Zelma Lake. This is where we get all our food, all the fish, muskrats, ducks, everything we get from this lake and we have for, um, for many, for many thousands of years, my ancestors have come here and, um, and lived and survived from Zelma Lake. And it's it's gone now. It's it's so devastating. It's so sad. This is where we harvested a lot of our food: muskrats, rabbits, ptarmigan, ducks, caribou. Everything we got from this lake, and it's it's gone. It's it's very sad. It's very devastating. What happened at Zalmo Lake wasn't a part of a scientific theory. Something that can't be debated any longer. It's proof climate change is happening here and now. We have to let the world know what is happening. So, we went to the steps of the Yukon Territorial Legislature to make our concerns known. Salmon is on a drastic decline. All our foods are on a drastic decline. We're going to have a real issue of food insecurity and health pertaining to our people, especially indigenous peoples who live on the land. And I think it's time that, you know, people take this very seriously. This is very serious here. This is not only the Eastern Arctic problem, this is a North Yukon or Yukon Territorial problem as well. And we need to get some politicians to start doing something, to start planning forward, get some adaptation strategies with respect to food security here in the Yukon. And I think that's where we need to go and that's why I'm here today. Okay, thank you. We have taken our message to the world. While we work on stopping the causes of climate change, we also have a lot of work to do at home. It's a cushy, 
Our elders have warned us for years that hard times are coming. They said we have to start planning for long-term changes. We have to find food security. While we have to look at the new solutions, our elders also teach us that we have to remember what kept us alive in the past. The only way we're going to survive is to learn those skills, traditional skills, of our ancestors for the future. We can't live on white man food alone. We got to share what we have and look after it and take care of that caribou. You see, we can't go to the grocery store to get cheap foods. We are far from markets and everything must be flown in. It is very expensive to eat outside food. We have to find resources to feed ourselves. So, we held a symposium in January of 2009. Elders, youth, government and scientists met to talk about our land and our food. Mother Earth, we call Mother Earth because she gives us life. And just like our mother provides us with life and nurtures us. And I think that's the really the big goal here is that we want to make sure everybody in the com community understands what the issues are. Not just, you know this one little sliver of the problem, you know, and you know another sliver of the problem. Everybody as a whole group knows all of the problems and all of the challenges and hopefully can start finding some of the solutions. The youth were able to interact with researchers and hear from the elders sharing their traditional knowledge. Many people shared thoughtful wisdom and advice. This year, I uh, only had to chat Martin for one month due to all the water and the overflow and all the air hole pockets in the lake. I had to pick up my trap early. So you can see what's going to happen when this elder talk about 10 to 20 years down the road how it's going to be for you guys and what you guys will be facing. As our chief, Joe Linklater, says, we will have to work as a united peoples around the circumpolar world to accomplish our goals. And all of the indigenous people uh, from the circumpolar north are facing the same uh, uh, issues and challenges that we are here in North Yukon. So I think the information that we can provide to the broader community um, would be helpful, but we also need to figure out how does this fit into uh, the research that they're doing uh, in Russia, and in Sami country, uh, uh, um, and uh, across uh, the, the Inuit uh, um, territories. But besides teaching and talking, some of our citizens are finding new ways to feed ourselves. Here, 150 kilometers above the Arctic Circle, the first experiments at farming and gardening are taking place. Actually, this is my first time raising turkeys. I had tried chickens before and geese. That was about 10 years ago. and So I'm just trying something new this year and it seems to be doing good. Teresa also has a garden where she produces a small vegetable crop. This is our first year growing here in Oprowin. So I tried something. It, it grew pretty good, so I was quite happy with the cabbages and broccoli, cauliflower. Most of all, what, what I was really surprised with celery, because celery, you have to have warm climate for them, mm -hmm. and they're very hard to grow even in white horse. And it, I had no problem with it. Elder Stephen Frost also shows me his garden. This is uh, like spinach, I guess that's what it is. And this is big as it could go. You could go here anywhere. Uh, I have potatoes here and there all over. And down at my cabin, I got a garden of potatoes there. There's quite a bit of it going on in town now, and it's going to get better. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. um, this one is like. Uh, you could just put a little bit in your tea. Man, oh man, look at that. Feel how strong you get when you eat that? This is sweet peas. I guess it's like flowers, huh? 
flowers after a while. While we can try growing new things, real food security comes from knowing what is on the land that can sustain us. This is fall onions and this is good to eat with fish, especially uh, salmon and there's all kinds of food out here that you could live on. There's berries and plants. Well, we're here at Schaefer Creek and we're at the end of our travels. So we're getting ready to go and all our stuff is getting packed into the boats. So we're gonna head on down Schaefer Creek, go to Crow River, and then we're gonna hit Porcupine River to Old Crow. And that's where our destination is. And that's where we're gonna go. Despite the changes, we have had a successful hunt this year in the Crow Flats. You got your bag? Yeah. Did you like your Did you like your trip? Yeah, I like it, but mm, it's fun and good luck. Okay. A lot of hard work has meant we'll have enough food for our family this year enough food to share. Guys, drive right by. <laughs> the question is, how long will it last? You take only what you need and nothing more. You give back to the land, always respect the land, because if you don't, the land is going to take something from you, and you might not like what it's going to take. We, the people of Old Crow, the Van Tat Kuchin, are doing our best to adapt. But change threatens to overwhelm us. How do you stop lakes from draining, fish from declining, and caribou from disappearing? Our experience now has to be told to the world. Change is here, now. It's coming to you. It's going to affect your community, your people, next. The youth are paying attention. The communities are paying attention. We need to act now.
Thank you.